Financial records obtained by House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer reveal Hunter Biden received over $250,000 in wires from Chinese business partners, and Joe Biden's Delaware address was listed as the beneficiary. On the wire that Hunter Biden received from the Chinese National, uh, the beneficiary address listed was Joe Biden's home address at a time where I'm pretty certain Hunter Biden was not living in the home of Joe Biden. This Jonathan Lee who wired the $260,000 from China to Hunter Biden's personal account, uh, he is part of the, the Chinese Communist Party. And it, it happened while Joe Biden was a candidate for president. American Majority Founder and CEO Ned Ryan joins us now. Ned, Democrats led by Jamie Raskin, Dan Goldman, continuously say there's no evidence whatsoever tying Joe to Hunter's business dealings. Then how the heck, Ned, do they explain this? Well, exactly, Todd. I mean, I'm sure they're going to be out there today bleeding that there's still no evidence, but a little hard to, to deny that. And, and it's also proof Todd, in my mind, that Joe Biden has been lying the whole time when he said he had no uh, awareness, did, never had conversations with Hunter about his business dealings. A little hard to deny that when it's your address on the wires. Um, it, it also tells me, again, Joe is intimately involved, as we know, with these wires, as with the phone calls, all the other pieces of evidence that are building up that he was intimately involved in the family business of influence peddling. I will say this, Todd, the other thing that really strikes me as interesting about this is that the wires took place a few months after he declared for president, which uh, strikes me as extremely interesting timing to be getting this money. Yeah, that certainly raises the stakes here a bit. And Ned, you look at the president's position right now politically. You know, there are major concerns about his age. There, the poll numbers yes. are bad. The situation with Hunter Biden legally is not helping matters. There was one White House insider who was quoted as saying that a third party candidate is, quote, bleeping concerning. Uh, what is going to happen yes. here? Well, I have to tell you, Carly, I I'm still convinced that at some point this might become untenable for Joe Biden. Do I think there'll be a serious primary challenge? I do not. Uh, but at some point next summer, does this become a situation in which his physical ailments, uh, all of these pieces of evidence about his corruption add up to the point where Democrats realize he cannot be the nominee and does something happen on the floor of the DNC convention in August of next year in which they find a new candidate for the general election? I, I think at some point. It really feels like this is all going to implode physically and on the corruption level as well. Yeah. We need to move to the next topic, but I got to get your final thoughts on this because you said something in your original answer. Do you believe there is a connection between this payment and ultimately the White House's policies toward China? I do. I, I, it's hard, it's hard to, to say that there's not, Todd, when there's money coming in and you look at their policies, they're extremely dovish on China. Understood. Yeah. Well, uh, there was mass looting overnight, Ned, in Philadelphia. The images that we're getting in, the footage is unbelievable. It's reminiscent of the 2020 Black Lives Matter riots that took place in cities across the country. And it just feels like we haven't learned anything from this. Nothing has changed. There is still, there's a major police shortage in Philadelphia. The crime rate yeah. is high. There's an education issue as well. Fatherlessness also an issue. Uh, we aren't learning from our mistakes here. Will we ever? No, Carly. I mean, the, the issues of defund and weaken the police, cash bail reform, all of these things, this is what you get. And this is what happens. You get Philadelphia, you get mass looting and rioting and stealing. Uh, th they're not going into Lululemon or Apple or Foot Locker for bread. They're going in because they realize, they realize there will be little to no consequences for their actions. So until there's actual consequences for these, this type of behavior, you'll see more of it. And it's not lost. I don't think this is lost on the American voters, Carly. Yeah. When they see these things happening in Democratic cities, there's a reason that crime typically is one of the top two or top three issues for the voters, and I think it's going to be one of the top issues next year in the 2024 elections. Yeah, we heard AOC going into the commercial basically saying, these people need to eat, Ned, this is all stealing about bread, stealing bread. Said, yeah. Again, to your point, uh, yoga pants do not feed you. 15 seconds on this. How responsible are those social justice warriors for ultimately putting us in this position? 100 yeah. percent. These are absolutely the issues they have been pushing, and these are the consequences. And the question is, are the American people fed up enough to actually vote these people out of office? It's a sad state of affairs. Ned, thank you so much for joining us this morning.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.